Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series in uh, Bioenergy. So, in the last class, uh, we talked about the catalytic imperfection of Rubisco. So, what we realized is that uh, Rubisco is a very peculiar enzyme. On one hand, it needs carbon dioxide to get activated by the formation of carbamate followed by the positioning of the uh, divalent ions, metal ions, manganese or uh, magnesium. Then upon activation, it can bind to carbon dioxide and convert it into uh, phosphoglycerate. Whereas, at the same site where it binds to carbon dioxide, it can also competitively bind oxygen and uh, led to a molecule of uh, what we have shown in the previous uh, A, a molecule of phosphoglycolate. So, and this process is because of this uh, dual nature of uh, Rubisco of binding to carbon dioxide as well as a competitive binding to oxygen, it leads to when it binds to oxygen, it leads to photorespiration. So, and that add up to the inefficiency of the system of converting carbon dioxide to high chain or long chain carbon moieties. So, today what we will do in today's lecture, we will talk a little bit more about the photorespiration process, what is the fate. So, coming back to the slide, if you look at the slide where we ended. So, these are the two products. So, this is what is happening when instead of CO2, the oxygenase activity is being observed. When the oxygenase activity of Rubisco happens, this is one of the product, of course, the 3 phosphoglycerate which is forming, but apart from it, you have a product called phosphoglycolate. So, what is happening to this? So, phosphoglycolate is a 2 carbon. So, this is 1 carbon of phosphoglycolate, this is a second carbon of phosphoglycolate. Okay. So, phosphoglycolate, what is happening? What is the fate of the phosphoglycolate? So, there is a pathway. So, let me kind of explain the pathway to you. So, phosphoglycolate through different steps, we will enumerate the step, gets converted, but before that you just kind of get an understanding, gets converted into the simplest amino acid called glycine. And essentially, if you take two molecules of glycolate, which sums up to 4 carbon, because each glycolate moiety has 2 carbon, right. So, if you take these two molecules, then what you in resultant what you get, you get two glycine molecules and you eventually ended up with two glycine and there is one carbon dioxide which goes out. So, let me put the reaction that will make more sense to you. So, this is what is happening. So, we have started with in the previous reaction, we talked about ribulose 1, 5 bisphosphate. This was the precursor, okay? the 5 carbon chain on which the carbon dioxide is added. But in this situation, what you are adding is an oxygen and what you are getting is one molecule of 3 phosphoglycerate we have already talked about it, but the second molecule is what needed to be got rid of, which is having COO and CH 2 O PO 3 2 minus, which is a phosphoglycolate, 
phosphoglycolate. These phosphoglycolate gets hydrolyzed and form a glycolate, which is having CH 2 OH. So, what you are getting rid of is the phosphorus group out here, which you can see the phosphorus is coming out. So, what you are having the molecule is a glycolate. Now, this glycolate moiety eventually gets oxidized, where it gets oxidized. So, it enters into the peroxisomes. So, it is getting oxidized and in that process it pro forms H 2 O 2 and this H 2 O 2 is being further decomposed by an enzyme inside the peroxisome. It is called by catalase and this is all happening inside peroxisomes. And you ended up with glyoxylate, so which is C O O minus C O H. So, what you are getting rid of is that you are getting rid of one of the hydrogen out here and based on that this is after the oxidation which has taken place because of this oxy oxygen out here glyoxylate. Now, this is where you have started with this molecule which is phosphoglycolate and you landed up with glyoxylate. Now, glyoxylate is, so if you see it is essentially this whole process is this is not a very versatile molecule. Okay. So, this is basically it is called a salvage pathway where the carbon skeleton is kind of changing and the specific phosphatase convert the glycolate which enter the peroxisome as I have shown you it enters the peroxisomes okay. and uh, glycolate is an oxidized to glyoxylate by glyoxylate glycolate oxidase. So, the, the enzyme which is doing this reaction is called glycolate oxidase where oxygen is converted into H 2 O 2 and this H 2 O 2 is further cleaved by catalase to form H 2 O plus O 2. Okay. And then this glyoxylate is then. So, this moiety what you see out here it gets transaminase. So, this is what I was telling you in the beginning. There is a transamination process. In other words, there is an amine group which gets transferred and the subsequent result is you get two molecules of from two molecules of course, I am starting with two molecules, okay. two molecules of glycine which is the most simplistic amino acid plus what you are getting is. So, next what happened these, these two molecules of glycine is then converted in the mitochondria. This second reaction takes place in the mitochondria where the two glycine moieties so, if I remove glycine plus glycine, this forms a serine and serine is a 3 carbon molecule and this serine is further is basically it is a precursor for glucose. for glucose. Whereas, if there are 3 carbons and out here glycine you are having 2 carbon, so 2 carbon, but in this process while the serine is formed there is few other things which are formed. What you are getting is in the form of CO 2 is being liberated and NH 4 plus. So, we started with 4 carbon, 4 carbon is coming from 
two of these molecules. So, one and two. So, if there are two molecules then and at the end what you are getting is you could salvage three carbon in the form of serine and you lose one carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and of course, there is another product which is lost is NH 4 plus amino group. So, this pathway what you see this pathway serves to recycle three of the four carbon atoms of the two molecules of glycolate. However, one of them is lost as CO 2 and one of the two amino groups donated in transamination reaction is lost as NH 4 plus. This process what we explained just now is called photorespiration because this is one process where oxygen is being used up, oxygen is consumed and CO 2 is released. Whereas, as of now what we are talking about is CO 2 is consumed to form carbohydrate, whereas oxygen is released. It is just the reverse where oxygen is consumed. You see oxygen is consumed here, oxygen is consumed earlier. If you follow it, there are several steps where oxygen is being consumed. Oxygen is consumed here first, the next oxygen is consumed out here. So, it is multiple steps oxygen is getting consumed is getting consumed. So, photorespiration is essentially it is a very wasteful process, it is a fairly wasteful process which happens in the system and the organic carbon is converted into carbon dioxide without the production of any form of like ATP, NADPH or any other energy rich molecule. And because of this reason there are a lot of efforts which had been undertaken for decades together now to improve the catalytic efficiency of Rubisco. Some of uh, the people who work on evolutionary chemistry or evolutionary inorganic uh, chemistry, they say that possibly Rubisco has evolved in a environment which was rich in carbon dioxide. So, Rubisco really does not do very good in the presence of oxygen, but as the earth from anaerobic condition started to move towards aerobic conditions, Rubisco get on this creeping defects where carbon dioxide started to compete with uh, oxygen started to compete with carbon dioxide at the same binding site and so on and so forth. And there is one more thing I wish to highlight for uh, those of you who are thinking beyond it. It is actually it is not the carbon dioxide which is kind of there. Carbon dioxide in a form of bicarbonate is what is competing because, because of the formation of the bicarbonate. So, carbon dioxide molecule becomes much more accessible to the site. So, this is what in summary in sum total if you see through this reaction from the beginning is what we talked about the photorespiration process. So, now keeping this in mind we will and by the way here I should highlight that this reaction what we are talking about is all what happened in mitochondria where glycines are attached together condensed together to form a three carbon amino acid serine. Okay. So, now from here we move on to the, the Kelvin cycle. So, the title what we will be talking under the heading will be hexose or hexose phosphates which are six carbons. phosphates are made from phosphoglycerate, phosphoglycerate. Whenever we talk about this hexose, so those are the first commonly and readily available sugar and 
ribulose bisphosphate is regulated and we will talk about that how that gets regulated is regulated. So, having put this in front of you, now I wish to recall the beginning I told you that we still have not accounted for the NADPH and the ATP that same NADPH which was formed in the photosystem 1. Now, we will recall it where that NADPH actually comes very handy. Okay. So, now what I will do I will put the so again just take a let us do a recap photosystem 2 P680, photosystem 1 P700, photosystem 2 photosystem 1 at the same time absorbs light shoots an electron at different redox potential. So, one of or multiple chlorophyll molecules are now devoid of electrons. Those chlorophylls which are devoid of electron in photosystem 2 are brought back to their ground state by splitting of water and the electron subsequent electron which are generated bring them down back to their ground state. Whereas, in photosystem 1, the electron is brought back to their ground state by the electron which are hopping from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1. Whereas, the electron which has moved out of photosystem 1 reduced form a very strong reductant called NADPH and in that process there is a proton gradient which is created which leads to the formation of ATP which is a both a weak and a strong weak and weak reductant as well as a weak oxidant and while water is getting a split it generates one of the strong oxidant as O2 and we have talked about this NADPH is responsible for supporting the Kelvin cycle. Now, we will talk about that what is the role of NADPH and ATP. So, we are almost coming there where we left these two molecules from the beginning if you remember these are the two molecules we have not touched. So, now let me go back and put the cycle which was developed by Kelvin and his co-workers during 1945 to 1965 and after that also the work continued until this day there are so many mysterious things which we really do not know. Okay. To start off with in the slide. So, we talked about the first molecule which is entering here is CO2. So, CO2 as a single carbon, one carbon reacts with ribulose 1, 5 bisphosphate, 1, 5 bisphosphate which is 5 carbon. Okay. So, now this reaction, this attachment in the presence of Rubisco leads to the formation of 3 phosphoglycerate. Okay. So, you are having two such molecules of phosphoglycerate. So, which is 3 carbon moiety. So, you are having now 2 multiplied by 3, 6 carbons. Okay. At this stage, you need ATP to play a role and this leads to the formation of ATP. Of course, the phosphate is donated, you are having ADP. What you are getting is 1, 3 bis phosphoglycerate. Okay. Now, 1, 3 bis phosphoglycerate with the help of now the second molecule comes into play NADPH, a strong reductant donating its hydrogen forming NADP plus leads to the formation of glyceraldehyde 
free phosphate. Okay? And glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate could change its structure to dihydroxy dihydroxy acetone phosphate. The reason for this will come later. Okay, then this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate could form called as fructose 6 phosphate and this is the first molecule fructose 6 phosphate. So, when you talk about fructose now we are talking about sugar and if this molecule polymerize further which are not, this is not part of the circle then what we talked about formation of starch and sugar we will come later on to that. So, fructose 6 phosphate there is another pathway by virtue of which from glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate through a series of enzymes we will come later about that it could form what you call as ribulose 5 phosphate and the enzymes which are involved making this happen includes trans ketolase aldolase and there are other enzymes which are involved in it. At this stage there is another molecule of ATP which comes into play which is donating the phosphate and that brings it and the enzyme which is involved in it is called phosphoribulose kinase. So, that makes it ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate. So, now this is what we talk about is the famous Calvin cycle and out here there are a few other things which I am going to highlight now. Okay what is happening to fructose. So, you saw that fructose 6 phosphate out here, okay? fructose 6 phosphate. So, what is what are the other fate of fructose 6 phosphate? So, let us uh, one second. Okay. So, if you take this fructose 6 phosphate here and react it with glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate as you could see glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, the product you will get will be using transketolase as an enzyme. So, enzyme involved is transketolase. So, what you are getting is xylulose xylulose 5-phosphate plus erythrose 4-phosphate. So, further this erythrose 4 phosphate which is this compound if you take this compound and add this with you see this compound dihydroxyacetone phosphate what you will get is in the by the action of aldolase you will get sedo heptulose 1 7 bisphosphate. So, these are the different form of sugars which are getting formed different kind of carbons. Okay. Now, the sedoheptulose bisphosphate if you react this one again with glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which is what you will get is in the presence of transketolase what you will be get is uh, ribose 5 phosphate ribose 5 phosphate plus xylulose 5 phosphate so in other word what is happening is that if i had to summarize these three reactions 
So, what happened here is that C 6 this C 3 in the presence of transketolase T k is the transketolase what you are getting C 4 plus C 5. Then the C 4 chain what you took again add up with another C 3 in the presence of aldolase stand for A you get a C 7 4 plus 3. Then you take this C 7 plus another C 3 in the presence of transketolase shown by T k what you get is a C 5 plus C 5. C 5 plus C 5. So, you are having 5 carbon. So, you realize that what is the origin of this 5 carbon molecules? There are always 5 carbon molecules which are playing this game and to, in order to have this process functional what you needed is what there are few other enzymes which are involved in this process. So, the 4 additional enzymes which are involved in it are called sedoheptolase 1,7-bisphosphate phosphatase, phosphopentose epimerase and phosphopentose isomerase and phosphoribulose kinase. You do not have to worry about these things, but what is important here in this whole process what is happening is that you are consuming 2 ATP plus 1 ATP if you see the cycle and there are 2 NADPH. This is what you are consuming in this process of. So, and if you now go back to the cycle and add up, say look, this is where you are. You have the NADPH, what you are using here, 2 NADPH, okay. You have you are having 2 ATP which are getting consumed and here you are having another ATP which is getting consumed. So, now let us again summarize. So, from photosystem 1 you get this NADPH which is fed here that NADPH, this NADPH is fed here into this system. You have the other substrate carbon dioxide which is fed into the cycle out here to a 5 carbon ribulose bisphosphate, 1, 5 bisphosphate, then it from 3 phosphoglycerate and you have this ATP. The first series of ATP is fed here and the second line of ATP is fed out, out here. Okay. So, now, we account for all the things which are involved in it. We talked about where the carbon dioxide is fed into the system. We talked about where NADPH plays the role and especially ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate in the chloroplast, it exclusively 1,3-bisphosphate glycerate is exclusively acts in the presence of NADPH. Okay. So, overall what we see in this scheme of things, the most important, the first sugar which is formed is out here. So, now if we summarize what we talked about, we talked about a dark reaction where it is the carbon dioxide is converted into carbohydrate, the simplest sugar. And that process is executed by an enzyme called Rubisco. Rubisco has both carbon attachment property as well as oxygen binding property. So, when it binds to oxygen, it leads to photooxidation, whereas when it binds to carbon dioxide, it leads to the formation of higher chain carbons. And then we talked about when it follows the photorespiration, it leads to the formation eventually of the glycine, which eventually converted into serine. But end of it, we liberate a carbon dioxide by absorbing oxygen and we lose amino group. And out of four atom of two molecules, we could only salvage three carbon and one carbon is lost as carbon dioxide. And now, we talked about the whole Kelvin cycle of what all the products which are formed and how this is in a cyclic fashion. So, you always form a 5 carbon 
moiety which along with the carbon dioxide in the presence of rubisco as you could see out here in the presence of rubisco in the presence of rubisco the critical reaction taking place followed by this so this fructose bis, uh, fructose 6 phosphate is the starting material for all the biomass which is formed because these fructose 6 phosphate moieties then attached with each other we will talk about it in the next class from the long chain of starch and sugar. So, our next goal will be to you know to see this and and what it needed is these. So, we will be talking about now fructose 6 phosphate to starch and sugars which are source of all the biofuels and while we will be talking about this we will also talk about C 3 versus C 4 plants. This is something which and this process what are the regulatory features. So, our next class will be dealing with some of these topics how the first set of molecules are formed and of course, now we have already talked about the first set of molecule. Now, we will talk how they form the long chains and how the starch and sugar other sugars are being synthesized and how this process become fairly efficient at high temperature in crops like sugar cane or the others where there is always a danger of uh, photorespiration because of high temperature because photorespiration level goes up at high temperature. What are the mechanism which has been adopted by plants to create uh, technique to bypass photorespiration. Okay. So, we will close in here with this lecture. Uh, so, we will carry over from this point how the starch and sugars are formed. So, this is the whole schema of things. Now, we know how the starch and sugars are formed. It will be easy for you to realize how we are going to transform them to different other biofuel products. Thank you.